Earlier this year, I built this walk-in garden with raised beds so that I can comfortably garden without hurting my back or knees. And I left the center bare uh, with the intentions of building a different version of raised garden beds. And this is so I can still be above the rock, which my land is on, but be low enough to the ground where I can plant taller items such as corn or raspberries. If you're interested in plans in either one, then I do have them over on my website, which is linked for you down below. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you exactly how I built these. So let's get started. This is a very simple project. So if a raised garden bed's on your to-do list, and I definitely recommend trying to tackle it. I started off first going to get all of my material. And just a tip for you, whenever you're loading stuff, I have been utilizing the heck out of these simple straps. When I'm hauling long lumber, I intentionally use the red simple straps so that I can not only quickly bundle everything together and secure it, but it can also double as a flag. There's no knots, no hooks or ratchets. You tuck it into itself and cut it to the length you need. It's reusable and it even works whenever it's dusty or dirty or wet. I started this project off by processing my material and cutting all of the boards that I could up front to length. We were having some beautiful weather here in Texas. So I took advantage of it and moved my mobile miter saw station out to my porch, set up a stop block and started cutting my boards to length. By the way, storing two Bessie clams on the miter saw is very handy. And if you're interested in building a miter saw station like I have, then I do have a set of plans available over on my website. For the much longer stuff, I moved out to the actual job site and set it up on saw horses to use a circular saw instead of my miter saw. These are gonna be the boards that make up the side walls of the planter and they're out of the five quarter boards. It's often seen for decking. A tip for you when using a circular saw to get a straight line is to use a speed square as a guide. If I'm not wearing a tool pouch, then I just use them in my back pocket as a storage spot. A tip for you when you're able to get two boards out of one board, go ahead and pull both measurements just from opposite ends of the boards. And that way, whenever you line up to cut, you can make both cuts at the same time. And those are really the two main components that are now cut up. Now we just need to put the two together to start assembling the raised bed. I'd start by placing two of the long five quarter boards next to one another, and then using one of the short vertical boards to screw them together. These are placed kind of close together because it's surprising how much pressure the dirt inside of the raised bed will apply outward. So these guys will help keep the boards aligned. To make this step go a little bit faster, I recommend cutting a spacer board to length so that you can place one of the verticals, butt the spacer right up next to it, and then quickly place your next one without measuring. You can make sure that it's square either by moving the spacer down to the other side or using a speed square. After getting all four of the short sides done, I repeated the same process for the long sides using a different spacer to make this go quick again. Now it's very common for these boards to not be perfectly straight, so be sure to have a clamp on hand so that you can take out some of the twists or curves that you're going to encounter. Now just like the raised garden beds in the walk-in garden itself, all of this is made with pressure treated wood, which I researched and found out to be just fine for garden beds. After getting all four of the sides put in their place, now I could clamp them together to attach them to each other. I'm just making sure that the top is lined up because the top cap is going to come back and trim out all of this and you want it to sit nice and flush. So now you can go through with the level and just make sure that this is relatively level. I mean, it's a raised garden bed. You don't have to get it perfect. And this is actually looking pretty good. Let's go check this other one. Yeah, so this one needs to go up on this side or down on this side. So I'm just gonna take some dirt out around this high spot. And there we go. Okay. 
I think is what makes this cool. Like you get into a groove. So I'm using gravel just because I had a huge mound left over from paving the driveway to my shop, but you could very well use the dirt that you ended up trenching up if you don't have gravel. All right, now that the main body of the bed is built, it all needs to be capped off with a top cap. This top cap will not only give it a more finished look, but it's also gonna stabilize the wall from leaning out. Now you can very well set these in place and just cut them at a 90. However, I went ahead and mitered them so that both pieces could be secured to the corner piece right underneath it. And just a quick tip for you, a really quick way that you can cut these miters is to go ahead and secure one of the pieces. I went ahead and secured both of the long sides. And then I just placed the short side directly on top of it. Now you can make the mark with a speed square and cut both at the same time. I changed the depth on the saw to completely cut through the top one and then just score the bottom one. But if you have a blade that can go through both, then you can save yourself some time here. Now I could just go and secure these boards down to the body of the bed. Okay, and the very last thing, it might not be needed, but since I have an empty bed, I'm going to go ahead and throw it in, is a cross member piece that will stretch from one side to the other. What I'm worried about is filling these beds with soil and then the top of the wall is wanting to bow out from the pressure. So this board's just going to keep them nice and straight to one another. Even though I'm using pressure treated wood, I'm still going to line the inside of the garden bed with some plastic because regardless of what material you use, even if it's rot resistant, if it's in constant contact with moist soil, it will eventually rot out. This lining of plastic is very simple to put on. I'm just using a slap stapler and going around the perimeter. And it's drastically going to increase the lifespan of the body. actually have a little bit more dirt to put in these beds, but I have gotten worn out for today, so that will be tomorrow's task. I really hope that this video has helped you out. I cannot tell you how much I'm enjoying gardening. Now be watching for the irrigation video because I have installed drip uh, hose irrigation, so that will be coming up shortly. Don't forget that I do have a set of plans, not only for the walk-in garden and how to build the raised garden beds that are this tall, but also these two. That's linked for you down below, as well as everything I used in the video. So I will see you on my next video.